Hey, what's up, everybody? It's me again. It's your boy T Ryan. That's T E A R O N, period. And you are listening to another episode of the Ubiquitous Backs podcast. And I want to get right into it today. I don't want to waste too much time. On my journey of like finding good quality content in this medium, this podcast medium, I stumbled upon a podcast that I'll abbreviate as KSP, but it consists of three co hosts who are all black men and that's something that intrigued me. I found it and I was able to dive into it and I was like, oh shit, this is for me. It felt like I was talking to the boys. I feel like I was um listening to friends and I encourage you all to get to know these people and get to know this podcast. Today I have Jumpman Jones. James, just James. <laughs> nah, I mean, <laughs> but I'll just, I'll just say, no, no, no. Well, um, uh, James extraordinary. Uh, nah, just <laughs> I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let y'all, I'm gonna let y'all introduce yourself. I'm gonna let you get yourself some shine. I ain't gonna do you like that. <laughs> if you would go ahead, whoever wants to take it first, just introduce yourself real quick to the people. All right, well, I'm gonna let these guys, I'm gonna let these guys introduce themselves. Well, I might as well go now since y'all been making fun of me. I am James McClain, but I'm also known as James the Jellyfish on stage when I do comedy. So that's who I am. Uh, humble beginnings here in Charlotte. You know what I mean? That's where I'm from, 704. Uh, you know, and I just, you know, just be around making people laugh and shit, man. That's what I do. And you can check his, he actually has uh, some of his comedies on our page, on our IGTV page. It's a compilation of them, man. He's a great dude, funny dude, man. So. You get a chance, go check that out. Definitely, definitely. Who else we got? All right, man. You got Jukebox Johnny, man. Uh, I'm a Gemini. I like uh, <laughs> over the sunset. You would say. <laughs> <laughs> I like Nike sweatsuits. This is all true. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, man, one third of the Kicking Shit podcast, man. Um, thanks for having us on. Definitely, definitely. Who else we got? It's your boy Jumpman Jones. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm one third of the crew. Ain't too much to know about me, man. I'm from Charlotte. <laughs> and um, I'm all about our show. I'm all about this podcast and what we do over here at KSP, man. So yeah. Charlotte, North Carolina. So we all here. Being being in this podcast thing, if you all don't know, I, I what I try to do is I try to go through and I find stuff that I can kind of like catch up on or binge. A lot of people binge Netflix. I've been binging a lot of podcasts and shit lately. And some people, they be having shit going back to like 2016 and shit. I'm like, oh, damn, I ain't going to never catch up. But I'm trying to do that with the with KSP. I'm like, yo, y'all got a lot of episodes out there already. How did, how did it come about? How did you get into this? Or how did you decide that you were going to bring it all together? I guess it started with me. Um, I guess it started with me wanting to like get into the creative space again. I, um, I started in the creative space with, I mean, music, writing, um, just, just using my creativity. I've been in corporate America, not really using it and shit, just focusing on, you know, getting a raise and getting a wife and making some kids and, you know, the regular American dream. And so my co-host, uh, Jukebox, I started bouncing like ideas off of him with just concepts that I wanted to just sell to other people to use my creativity. Maybe I could write for other people. Maybe I could send out outlines for other people. And so um, we were uh, always, we had season tickets to the Hornets games and that's mainly where I bounce the tickets off and we always be having conversations. And so I wrote, I wrote up a, a treatment for what is, what is now KSP uh, for another show. And then I wrote it up and sent it to him and he liked it. He's like, we should just try to do this ourselves. So we sat in here one night, three years ago now, and we tried to <laughs> record an episode and shit, we haven't missed a week since we did sitting here that one night and tried to record an episode. So Damn, y'all, y'all yeah. better than me. Yeah. Y'all much better. We're all machine over there because, nigga, I will skip a motherfucking week. <laughs> I will skip yeah. a motherfucking time. <laughs> how did, how did, so you brought, um, you brought Jukebox into the fold pretty early on. What about, uh, how did James come in? Or James, how did you come in? I'll t- let him tell it first because it might be a different story. 
I was on these streets, man, hustling for people. <laughs> <laughs> Doing shows, you know what I mean? And, you know, they really weren't getting no friction. But I had always known Johnny. We went to school together and stuff. And Johnny used to come out to my shows and shit. And, like, I think he was scouting me then. He didn't want to tell me, but I figured it out <laughs> now. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. And, you know, they asked me to be on the interview one day. And it went well. And next thing you know, man, the boy was a co-host in the main stay on KSP. And I thank God for it. Yeah. Hey, hey, and and, and, it, and it, it's like I said, everybody, you can tell that the the right energy is there. It's, it, it's not any bullshit you ever hear, or it's never really like you know, it's never really unnatural. So it, it's a good good system you all got. Um, as far as like starting the podcast, I also like when I go into like the social media for it and stuff. I notice that you all kind of like travel a bit too, or at least it appears that way to someone who's kind of just casually checking it out. Did you all try to travel for content purposes or how did that come up? Like, were you like, oh shit, let's go out. Cause you all were in LA at one point, right? Uh, Yeah. How did that come up? Was that for the pod or was that just kind of casually like, oh, we boys. It's a, both. it's a little bit of both. It's just like, while we out here, let's, let's uh, extend our network. Um, let's meet with other people. Let's see what, who we can find to expand the brand. That's like one of the visions. Like, you know, a lot of people, they'll do a podcast and they'll restrict themselves to where they live. And I feel like with KSP, we're not going to restrict ourselves to where, I, where we live. If we got to go to Atlanta and get the brand out there and sit with creators in Atlanta, then we're going to do that. If we got to go to Miami, if we got to go to Texas, if we got to go to LA, we got to go to New York, if we got to go to talk to people. And, and, and let them know who we are and we get to know who the other creators are out here in this space, then we'll do that. And uh, of course, a plus to traveling is you also get a chance to explore a new community and meet new people and put your name out there. So we, we went to LA, you know what I'm saying, to get some content, but also for these guys, we work hard all year. So for everybody to relax, kick back, enjoy themselves, you know what I'm saying? Real shit. Yeah. Real shit. Yeah, I haven't been able to... Um... To properly travel since, you know, since the fucking pandemic. And that shit is getting to me bad, yo. Like, I'm to the point, I'm starting to be like the, like these white people out here. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> fuck this shit. Fuck yeah. these masks, man. One, one, thing, one thing about, especially like I told you all um, before we started, they recently had the, uh, the Derby yesterday, Kentucky Derby. And these white people was down there, maskless. Vaccinationless, <laughs> they didn't give a shit. They was like, "Hey, we out here," yeah, okay. and I was like, "Man, that's I'm getting to that point now." I want to, um, I want to talk about traveling a bit more, and anybody can answer this. Have you all seen how? Because they say like Charlotte is like Atlanta number two. Is that is that even true? I'll start there. <laughs> Do y'all feel like that? Uh, all the no. time we hear they say it's baby. So. So. <laughs> they say it's baby Atlanta, but no, I don't. I don't think it is. Um, it's it's its own unique community. Charlotte's baby San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> Charlotte built off banking. I'm not even sure what Atlanta's built off of. We a whole country <laughs> town trying to be young as hell, nigga. We right, got Beijing uh, on the forehead. Yeah, I hear bullshitting with ourselves. But nah, Charlotte a good city, bro, man. It's just, it's in the growing stage, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, the, reason, the reason I even mentioned Atlanta, you know, I was on the internet, because that's what we do. I was on social media, and I kind of noticed this year more than ever, more than ever, everybody, everybody's in fucking Tulum, Mexico. Have y'all seen this shit? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the new so, one. So, I swear, yo, somebody was like, what is this like? Atlanta, Miami mix is yo, why is everybody in Tulum? Have you all been there? What's going on down there? I think. And now I haven't been. I'm I'm looking on trying to go later this year. Um Really? Yeah, it's weird. Like you gotta fly into I think Cancun and then take a two hour drive to Tulum. Like there's no flights going straight to Tulum. Oh, that's great. Uh yeah. So, I mean, you got to really want to go. But from what I hear, it's just like it was untouched land and they made it touristy. And now everybody going out there. Hey, all the niggas is out in Saloon. <laughs> right. <laughs> Everybody's out there, I swear. Yeah. I was like, damn, I ain't never seen. They down there getting that tourist money because they've they, they been in Saloon 
like since since shutdown. Motherfuckers now, been out. <laughs> a lot of it has to do with the fact that Mexico is the only tr- place that we could travel to. Like you think so? Yeah. So everybody who was in COVID that really wasn't that concerned about the virus. Since Mexico was the one place that we could go to, that's where everybody was going. So that's how they, that's how it became so popular because beforehand, everybody had trips to Cancun playing, you know, your regular shit, Dominican Republic, all that shit. But see, with all the different travel restrictions, if you want to leave the country, it, it's one of those things of where can you go? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, shit got rerouted. Yeah. So I see. Everybody ends up in Tulum because default. I don't think everybody goes to Tulum if you can still go to, you know, Wherever you want to go, whether that be uh, Cabo St. Lucas or uh, Dominican, Republic. Dominican Republic or overseas to Europe or wherever yeah. you want to go. But by default, everybody with that travel bug, you got a passport, you go to Tulum. Shit. <laughs> Only place you go. Down, down there breathing on each other like a motherfucker. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking the water. <laughs> right. Hey, don't do it. <laughs> hey, look, what, what's the furthest? Each of you have have traveled in terms of distance. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, uh, probably uh, Nassau, Nassau uh, the Bahamas, or either Puerto Rico. One of those two. I don't know which one further. I don't either. I, look, I was thinking. I was like, is that the, ain't that the same place? Maybe no. Yeah, two distance. It might Honestly, be California. California. I was about to the say, California, California flight was five hours. The Puerto Rico flight was three. Cuba was like two. <laughs> three. If that, who went to Cuba? Uh, I went to Cuba, uh, jump man. I went to I went to Cuba. I went, we went to Havana in twenty was that twenty seventeen? Went to Havana, yeah. Went to Havana in twenty seventeen. But that's the uh, but that wouldn't be the farthest because Cuba is is not far at all. Matter of fact, uh, when you go to Tampa, they mm-hmm. said Cuba is like a one hour boat ride south of Tampa or something like that. Oh, that's, so that's it's, some it's not oh, it's, oh, that's, that's, that's down the street. <laughs> no way. Nah, <laughs> I, I, I've been around. I've been around. I think. I think that's a really good thing. Um, you know, between black men and, and and black women, they they say that we travel more than they do because a nigga can just dip out <laughs> and gotta worry about shit. And so women always gotta like be left with whatever, so they can't really make it shake and move. But that's changed a whole lot. Let me tell you this. This generation that we're in now, I think everybody's starting to move around a bit more because we're a bit more, um, we have a lot more access. We have a lot more education. Mm-hmm. And so I've, I've been fortunate enough just with stuff that I do to kind of travel a lot internationally. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's, it's one of the things I, I wish I'd done a, a little sooner, even though, I mean, I think we're all in the kind of same age groups and stuff. We still got time. Oh, yeah. And definitely don't wait. Don't wait. I don't care. If if you got some fucking PTO or some shit at work, use that shit to do whatever you got to do, because right. out, and then, man, listen, and then and then everybody's working remotely. Are any of you all working remotely? All day, uh, I'm working remotely. Two thirds, two thirds. <laughs> <laughs> who, who who had to go back in? Who had to go back to work? Man, me, Jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, they said you were. You been essential the whole time. Oh, man, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about being unessential. <laughs> hey, wasn't nothing worse than being essential when everybody was getting all that motherfucking uh, unemployment money? I was like, "Hey, this is bullshit." I <laughs> cause I was essential. Yeah, I knew I, this, I had to I watch this my girl. girl. Oh, go ahead. oh, my bad. I had to watch my girl get like six hundred a week. Right. Well, I'm I'm doing forty hours, nigga. Coming home, nigga, like damn. Yeah. She just sitting there getting six hundred a week. I was mad as hell. Right. I knew plenty of people just sitting on the couch. I'm getting dressed, going to work. They sitting on the couch collecting that money. Oh, boy, that I was shit like, hurt. Man, I'm about to apply for uh, something. It was another job. Change, Give me bro, some food nigga. stamps. Give me quick. something. <laughs> <laughs> they had food stamps. <laughs> Like help me out, please. Give me food to have Joe I Biden. Work, like I quit, just collect unemployment like a mother. Right, man. I know people who didn't go back to work when shit started opening back up because the money was so good to sit at home. Yeah, right, shit. and it was hot outside. I'd lay by my pool every day if I could. Now all that shit gone. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. it's gone. Yeah. Struggling. But yeah. <laughs> I think they just now started keeping up with like 
You know how like normally if you do well, I never done it, but I heard. But you know how normally if you do unemployment, you have to actively look for a job or whatever, right? So I think they just now started getting people back into that where they're like, well, you got to report if you've been looking for work. So he just started doing that. But I was like, man, listen, I wanted that money so bad. I had a friend of mine, she um she was trying to get, you know, her, her job was cutting hours and shit because of COVID and stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was like, just tell them to go and just tell them to fire you for a while so you can collect the change. And she tried to do it. They they just wouldn't let her be. Oh, I was like, that's the wackest shit. Management, let me go, bro. I'll be back. <laughs> Fuck. But <laughs> uh, speaking of COVID, speaking of the changes that happen, y'all getting vaccinated? I know. <laughs> Wait, I, I want to ask this first to James because that was something that came up in one of the podcasts that I listened to. Man, and James has some, some words. You going to get vaccinated, James? Man, I ain't answering this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Government might be hot on my trail, nigga. They might try to wrap me up and force vaccine me, nigga. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Ju- jukebox, you get you get vaccinated, man. Right. I, I mean, I already got the first shot, man. See? I, I'm one See? shot. <laughs> Y'all niggas gonna be zombies like a motherfucker, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you might as well get taken off of work if you get vaccinated, bro. You do? Yeah, to recover. At least my oh, say, oh, that's two days off. You, what you got to recover from? Exactly. <laughs> 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 no, wait, no. That's a good point. That's a good point. Wait, so, so is that for each shot you get two days off? Nah, just for the um the second one. The second one is the one that puts you down. Makes sense. See, um, that's, that's, that has it. They uh, that second shot, they were like body sore, headaches, but they only last a day or two. See, I don't even like that. <laughs> Man, I think I, I think I'm gonna be all right. I'm gonna use the two days though. Probably go get my hair cut, run some errands. Tell me, I'll be getting his hair cut in bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you ain't going nowhere. Nah. Sounds like you sound like you gonna be laid to the side. <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about it though. I've been thinking about it just because I do want to like move around and I do want to travel around, but. I, as much as I, James was joking, I was laughing and stuff. I kind of, I'm a, in the same boat. I'm like, I don't know yet. Like I'm, something really got to come up for me to be like, all right. I don't blame anybody for not getting vaccinated because, A, you know what I'm saying? It's your body and no one's to tell you what to do with that. That's that's off the rip. But then also, man, I mean, it is a risk. It is a risk to put something foreign into your body. Uh, with me, I know my main concern is protecting the people around me. We come here, we record this show every week. Um, I, I got to go help my mom, you know what I'm saying, every other week. So, you know what I'm saying? And then I have other family members who I haven't seen in 365 days because I know they have the type of immune systems where if I come there and I don't know I got something and I give it to them, they're going to have a rough 14 days. And then on top of the fact that I lost my uncle to COVID, it's like I want to protect everybody around me. So that's why yeah. I made that decision. But I don't if somebody don't want to get vaccinated, it's perfectly cool because shit, I don't even want to take the flu vaccine. So I, I get it. And on top of the fact, truth be told, we're part of a big ass experiment right now. So everybody getting vaccinated when motherfuckers look at you and they say, yo, they experimenting on you, nigga, they give you a paper to tell you that they're experimenting on you. <laughs> Cause it's not FDA approved. So therefore, I don't blame anybody who want don't want to get vaccinated. And at the end of the day, if you still want to travel, do what you got to do, you got to live your life. And the best way to do that in this day and age is to make sure you distance yourself from people if you're not getting vaccinated. And make sure you're keeping the mask on and keeping your hands washed, doing what you can to stay away from germs. Other than that, you can't live in fear. That's what I know that's what 2020 showed me. You can't live in fear at all. So you, you got to live at the end of the day. 2020 showed me that if you, if you are... Um, as ignorant as possible. <laughs> you gonna keep living no matter what. Oh yeah. It's a mo- the most ignorant motherfuckers was out here didn't give a shit about nothing. And 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 I was like, damn, I'm way too informed to <laughs> this is bullshit. Now you're right. Yes. I am like I swear I'm like way too way too informed. I know a lot of my um 
a lot of friends I have, a lot of them are comedians and stuff too. But a lot of them haven't been able to perform. James, you you actually do stand up yet? Yeah, man, I do stand up. When's the last time you've been able to actually get in front of people? It's been a minute. It's <laughs> been a minute, I tell you that. <laughs> is it something you plan is it something you plan on getting back into or you waiting for things to kind of most clear up more? Yeah, uh on the last show I did a little little shout out to, you know, put it back in the air if anybody had a show or something like that, let your boy know type stuff. So, you know, I'm definitely looking. I mean, I've been seeing other comedians get shows like a motherfucker, but they got to go out of town and stuff. And, like, I ain't really willing to go to Atlanta right now. It's shit too hot. Right now, so. they, got the, they got the cure, though. Who? Atlanta. Antibodies <laughs> <laughs> in the hoop. I'm telling you, yeah, yeah. jukebox. So they said that they were telling me before we started that. Um, so you, you and Jumpman have known each other the longest, yeah? Yeah, probably since I was like 13, so maybe 20 years yeah, now. Yeah, 20 years. Okay, I knew I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> 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 How do you feel like that? Um, that helps you all with what you do now, because at, at this point you are, it's, it's, you know, that's like a brother at that point. Yeah, you hit it on the head right there. It's just like my brother, man. I known him for that long, so I think that helps us out. I mean, we kind of know each other. We really like grew up maybe a block away from each other, um, so just the chemistry was already there. I mean, we already could sit down and talk for two hours and not even realize it's been two hours. So us hopping on the mic to do that, it was, it was, it was just simple. Yeah, it was like here. Yeah, might as well record what the fuck we saying. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we had season tickets to the Charlotte Hornets, and the Hornets was trash. So a lot of those nights, <laughs> they lose it by like thirty points. So we just sitting there having a conversation the whole time. Bro, we good now. <laughs> well, we okay. good. We good. Yeah, that, he, that was then. That was then. <laughs> oh. All right. Yeah, there we had Michael Carter. We, we, have, we have we Mike have Mike Kid Grill Kid oh, Grill yeah. Chris. <laughs> Can he say it? We had the White Howard. No, we had the White Howard for a little bit. Oh, uh, that's what, Frank Kaminsky. The two. <laughs> okay. Well, we thought they was gonna hit that year, man. We really did. We thought they was gonna go off. They did. They did. <laughs> <laughs> they went off. He had the white one off. He kept his job yeah. through, through, through Charlotte. That's probably the reason why he's still here. Yeah. He How, did you, do you all recall? Um, because obviously you grew up in the same neighborhood. What's what's one of what's a story that you all recall just kind of growing up in Charlotte, being like teenagers at the time? What's something that really stands out to you all? I guess you both could tell a piece of this because it may be different for each other. What's what's a moment that stands out to you all where you were like, oh yeah, this is the homie, and you kind of just knew that you were gonna be rocking for this moment? Ah <laughs> oh, man, a whole bunch of moments, man. Oh man, um, man, I was guess- talking about Johnny's the most loved person in our neighborhood. <laughs> And I was the oldest person in our neighborhood. And they told me he could play basketball real well. That's actually how we met. And I don't know, man. I don't know the moment when we really bond. <laughs> because we played ball together all the time, every day, all summer. Yeah. And, I mean, at first I wanted to beat him in basketball. And then it, I, I caught the same flu everybody else would. Did. I wanted to be on this team. Like, man, I want to play with that dude. He's good. Like everybody loved Johnny in our neighborhood. First of all, neither one of these niggas pick up a ball. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen neither one of these niggas. It. It, it was even somebody's knees ain't built for. It. It was even built for it. <laughs> I mean, we competed all the time. It was even in football. It was, we was lined up across from each other. He was defending me. I was defending him. We had some of the most memorable games. Yeah, I think just over time, just always competing, always being outside together. I can't really pinpoint the time. I think when Johnny got like a teenager, teenager in high school, that's probably when we got really, really close. Yeah. I think it was too. Like most parents was really strict on their kids. Like they had to be home by the yeah, street yeah. lights was on. And yeah. my parents didn't really care. And his oh, and he was the only child. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> so we were the only two available to go out and do something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we would buy, we played uh, NBA Live forever. Oh, yeah. We used to get on the sticks all summer. Yeah. We played video. <laughs> All the time. We just really just growing up that close to somebody, like 
you get up in the morning and the first thing you do is go up to this this man's house and get on the computer or yeah. you go into the garage and we'll play in yeah or like it's just it's yeah. one of those things that just really developed over time. Golden Eye, no mercy. And WWE. Hey, I was I was about to say, what was the dopest N sixty four game? Though? <laughs> no mercy. Definitely that Golden Eye is classic. We all created a character on No Mercy, and we would like set up pay per views and stuff. <laughs> yo, yo, you could tell me shit. I was kicking ass on No Mercy. <laughs> you could tell me shit. Yeah, we all created a character. We would set up like little pay per views. We had an Intercontinental Champion, and you had to beat the Intercontinental Champion. Yeah, we had the, uh, the Champion, the Heavyweight Champ. We had it set up, bro. <laughs> you know, you know what's so funny? I remember. I don't know what what the fuck, but I remember um, creating a character on there, and I I don't know I. I actually was like really, really exceptional in school in terms of like um, literature and social studies, all that shit. So I could, you know, read and write. And I was, that was always something that came natural to me. But for some reason, when I created this character, I constantly spelled this nigga's name incorrectly. So really, I was just trying to call him like Demon, right? <laughs> but I kept putting D E A M O N. And I was like so certain that I, it was correct. And I was kicking ass with him playing the motherfucking story and all that shit with him. And for years, I played that fucking game, I feel like. And I never caught on to it until I got old. I was like, damn, I, that's the dumbest shit. Right. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was that was a good a good moment. Clap. And then um, who 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 because I was like I said, I was listening to the pod. Who was working at the at the shoe store? Oh, that was at one point. Funny. Yeah, that was me, man. So I start working. You was the plug. Yeah, I was the plug, man. She used to spend my whole check there too. Uh, but I was <laughs> 13 years, man. I started working at uh, Champ Sports. Shout out to Champ Sports. I ain't scared to say their name. I worked there from like 17 to 30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you put it all. Uh, yeah. They did it. I did four one k out of there. So shout out to that. All y'all young men out there, you start your job, start your little job. See if they got a four one k. Get you started. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. oh shit. <laughs> so I heard 401k too. Oh, for Harris 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 Harris. Harris. No, for Harris Oh, Harris. okay, that's oh. respectable. Yeah. Oh, see, that's respectable <laughs> <laughs> so so that was so so you work you worked at Champs. That was was that your first job? Yeah, well see my um my family owned a dog grooming business, so I did that in the summer. But my first real job was champs, man, flipping shoes, man. Not flipping shoes. <laughs> and then you said you worked at who? Who said they worked at Harris Teeter? I did. Okay. Okay. A lot of people. A lot of people don't know what Harris Teeter is. Actually, you know it's regional. Yeah. Oh, it's a grocery store. It's like a uh, yeah. What's the real popular? It's like a Kroger. Yeah, we have, we have Kroger here. Okay, yeah, we have Kroger here, and then I think they have like Ralphs and shit, but it's all the same company or whatever, right? Yeah, I think Kroger uh, bought Harris Teeter, honestly. Yeah, Kroger did buy Harris Teeter. Yep, they own by uh, Harris Teeter. Yeah, and then and then uh, James, what was your first job? My first job was McDonald's, like a motherfucker. Did the ice cream machine work? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, I don't in Concord, so we we had class. Oh, okay, you know yeah, I mean? they, 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 the ice cream machine yeah, got to work on the white side. Always clean work. ass play place. Yeah. You know, people used to just come over like to ours just because of the ice cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah come on over. <laughs> ice cream machine. Never. I was watching some shit on YouTube the other day, and they were saying how Wendy's frosty machine is the same thing as the McDonald's um, ice cream machine. That should always work. But Wendy's should always work. Bro, that's a conspiracy with that. Damn, that's crazy. I think I just think the employees lie. To me. I just think it don't feel like making ice cream. Yeah, that's pretty much. Ice cream. I pretty much uh, picked up on that because I'm like, don't you got to like break that shit down at the end and clean it? I mean, James, you know, right? Don't you got to break the shit down and clean it? <laughs> but I ain't never do that shit. I always left. <laughs> See? And that's why, that's why I flip up. with a frosty, bro. Man. Oh, man. Yo, when, when I found out the, the fat shit was on, um, Dipping your fries in the frosty. Oh yeah, yes, dash is crazy. My sister been doing that since the nineties. Now they they sell it like that. You can put put fries in your frosty. See now, that, come on. Yeah. It's supposed to be like an accidental shit. You know, they put it on the menu. It's a secret menu option now, nigga. Right. <laughs> I used to put honey on my chicken nuggets. 
That's not that's bad. Not, they're not really gonna sound bad. They don't yeah. sound bad. I do that on my, that, that, my spicy chicken. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Honey on the spicy yeah. chicken. That's I was bad. the first nigga doing that shit. Right, black everybody, history moment. Yeah, bro, everybody. <laughs> Like y'all got some money? They be like, that was, <laughs> you know, that was your money right there, man. As a teenager, I wouldn't judge you, but if this age is like, that sounds good as hell. Bro, money <laughs> on chicken yeah, used nice. to be that jump off. I mean, I don't eat chicken now, but you know what I mean. Back then, you don't eat chicken or you don't eat meat. I don't eat no meat. Period. What? Everybody's vegan. Yeah, who else? Do y'all yeah. vegan? Yeah. <laughs> they ain't vegan. Just, I eat everything. I eat deer meat, bacon, chitlins. I have limitations on the on the meats I eat. I'm like, I ain't gonna fucking eat every fucking thing. I eat, I do eat some parts of the pig, but I'm like, come on, man. I know I know better. <laughs> what made you go vegan? What made you be like, I ain't doing that shit no more? Man, I'm gonna be honest with you. My granddad had passed. He, his favorite meal was skins and beer. And they used to always say, like, you know, if his diet was different, that he'd still be alive. So, you know, I just changed mine. That's yeah. That'll, that will do it. That will do it. That's, that's, I mean, that's a good, that's a good, um, a good place to start. And then how long have you been doing the vegan thing? It's been about six years now. Oh, shit. So it's, it's nothing to you at this point. Yeah. You're in the groove of thing. I seen this lady that um I don't know if you ever seen. I'll have to probably send you the link, but it's really I think it's really dope as far as science goes. There's this black lady who I think she was in like her seventies when this when the story came out, but she's still she's still very much alive and well. But she's transitioned to be like a raw food vegan when she was like fifty, right? Mm-hmm. And they did an interview with for her, and she she looked like Claire Huxtable, <laughs> like and she just like it's like she. Stop aging, but you, she, um, her husband, he kept doing what he was doing, you know, grilling, chilling. His head, he had like a head full of gray hair. He was in like a wheelchair and shit. And he was bloated as fuck. And he, they, she said they would go to the store and shit together, right? And people would be like, "Oh, how, is that your dad?" And they were in the same age. And then they like interviewed some of her friends and stuff, and people were around her like she, you know, was close to. And they all looked well aged. It was the craziest shit. With my wife, and it was like, yeah, we should have did it. We should have, you know, got on when she did because look at her now and look at us. <laughs> it's, it's real. It's real shit out here. That's kind of fucked up. You know what I mean? It is. <laughs> but yeah, I be noticing it too. Like people that are like real vegan, because some vegans eat unhealthy. Yeah. Be honest. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Real- yeah. Not just it's, like it's, people that it's eat- those vegans. Those vegans that be frying up all the fucking vegetables. If you don't like vegetables, nigga, just say that. <laughs> nah, that shit sound- and if you if you think about it, if you fry a mushroom, bro, mushrooms soak up the grease. It's something about a mushroom, so you know what I'm saying yeah, it's gonna yeah. be like less greasy. But mm-hmm. then again, you know what I'm saying this. You're right though. You definitely nah, but right. They, they do like real vegans be having clear skin. Skin. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I ain't still do the like mocha, <laughs> mocha, loca, choca, loca. <laughs> yeah. Mocha skin. Yeah. Good melanin. Yeah, man. She, yeah, she was, she was on a hardcore. It was all like raw food. She didn't, she didn't like overcook anything. And she like grew her own fucking food in her garden and shit. I was like, yeah, that's, that's yeah. ideal. Definitely. I said, maybe when, maybe when I'm 50, I'll do it. <laughs> but right now, maybe give when- me a motherfucking... <laughs> Man, gluttony is overrated, man. I'm sorry. I'm, I, you know, I talked to a foodie woman, and I'm just like, yo, you don't have to eat that shit every goddamn day. <laughs> like, she switch it up. <laughs> right. I went to this place. Uh, we got a spot here called City Barbecue. Every Tuesday, rib bones, $1.50. I was in that motherfucker grubbing. Rib bones? <laughs> her bones. Rib bones? They fall off. <laughs> Per bone, bro. A dollar fifty per bone. Meat for a dollar and fifty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What is that? What are you buying? <laughs> get you about seven, eight bones, and then you get you some sides and some lemonade, sweet tea. If I still ate pork, boy, I'd be right over Right. There. I was in there. All the dope boys in there with their little trap queens. I'm going to treat you. I'm going to treat you. I got you. <laughs> Damn, he gave you that small ass rib. Try to give it to you for a dollar. Yeah, they do. They the little, the little end piece rib. 
<laughs> and uh, it's, it's so true. Like the, the value you you pay for uh, some meat does make you wonder. I when I was living in New York, there used to be these little quick little Chinese spots, right? For, don't let me, let me stop. <laughs> let me stop. No, I'm gonna go into it. There's these quick little Chinese spots, right? And you go in there, and I've never been any to any other city where they do this. And you know, like in New York, it's just over, it's overpopulated and shit. So it's like they gotta be cutting corners somewhere. But you will go in there, and basically you build your, you know, your little takeout box. Everything it was like a dollar. Mm-hmm. So you just like, man, I'll let me get that. So however much of whatever you get, everything is a dollar. And I and I was like eating it one day, and I was like, hold up, man, <laughs> this is too much of a deal. To, in New York City, nigga, this is too much of a deal. Right. I was like, nah. So I, 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 I was like, nah. I'm gonna cut it out because you know, you know, you you can find grub on the street in New York. <laughs> yeah, you can. That shit, dog. And cat. <laughs> <laughs> you know the you know the rat you know the rats out there is is, is big than a motherfucker. So <laughs> yeah, I, see, I saw a video of a rat. He was carrying a whole piece of pizza up some stairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and dare you dare you say anything to him? Like what? <laughs> I see you taking a bath. This nigga is taking a straight bath. Like, yo, yo, I couldn't even watch that shit. I, I know exactly what you, he was like standing up, right? Yeah, nigga standing up taking a bath and shit. <laughs> like, yeah, yo, I, animals, bro, animals are smart as hell, man. That nigga was like washing his ass and everything, bro. Now nah, for real. And he wasn't getting the soap in his eyes or nothing yeah. either. Bro, that shit was wild. Wild shit. That nigga might have been a hybrid rat. Bro. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a New York rat. Uh-huh. Hey, man, off the topic. Come special. I was, um, I was, we got this place called the Boardwalk here in Charlotte. You seen I, the rat over there? No, but I seen. I was like, <laughs> 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 the two niggas smoking black and miles walking monkeys. <laughs> hey, wait. Yeah, <laughs> bitches. <laughs> And they was walking around the boardwalk, and they was smoking black and mild. I was like, what? <laughs> "Wait, what kind of monkeys? You, like little, 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 um, them little monkeys, like the little black and white ones? Yeah, what kind of monkeys? Called spider monkeys or something like that. But yeah, they Don't had you a, gotta have a license for this shit. Little underwear. Hell, these no. niggas is wild. And they were smoking black and mild. I was like, it's the hoodest shit I ever seen." <laughs> <laughs> the, the, so they had the monkeys smoking blacks. Nah, they were smoking the dudes, <laughs> but they had the monkeys on the leashes, walking them around the boardwalk. It's like a little lake, and you can walk around. They got like shops and stuff. People be out there with their kids, mm. and these two dudes, the hoodest dudes. Oh man, like about walking monkeys. Mm. I can see it now. Oh man, I, I've noticed. I've noticed. A, I've noticed a rise in black people that visually, like you can find them. Uh, black people that are actually out there fucking with animals. You know, they say we don't. But we obviously, we had to at some point, right? Because, you know, niggas, like, we we don't, we don't, I, I think the difference is we don't, um, you don't really find us too often disrespecting an animal's, like, territory type shit. We, I, I respect the shit. Let me go to some woods or something, and they'd be like, oh, this is where the, this is some bear droppings. I'm like, oh, yeah, cool. So let me go ahead and leave. I'll, I'll, I'll leave your habitat. 100%. But there's a lot of I know I know a lot of a lot of black zookeepers and shit kind of popping up and stuff. Yeah, what's I'm, Tarzan? Real Tarzan? Tarzan? Yeah, that's the Tarzan. only nigga I know. I don't yeah, know no, yeah. no, 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 no. There's there's some others out there. I think I think I think that dude's probably the most visible in terms of social I mean, media. That, that interview on I Am Athlete. There's a lot of black people in the space. He was yeah. just like, you know what I'm saying? He was like, well, what's the guy that got beat up? That's not Tarzan, right? It was a dude that got <laughs> and he, didn't, he didn't want to take a picture with a fan. Uh-uh. And they beat him up. Oh, no. and he messed with animals from, too, though. From a human? Nigga. They're going to beat the shit out you. <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I fuck with uh, big ass like cats and bears and shit on a regular, you're not finna just whoop me in the public. <laughs> like, right? you can't. You're not just gonna beat my ass. I'm sorry. Oh, no, nature. nature, brother nature. Oh, I know, brother nature. Yeah, brother nature got his ass beat in Miami because he didn't want to take a picture with a fan. <laughs> <laughs> boy, you got to be nice as hell, boy. <laughs> Even when you don't feel. Uh, but you know, shit like that does happen in Florida. Every Florida is its own. 
its own planet, man. I, <laughs> I really is. I don't know. Right, some some about some about the Florida water. Facts. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. I'm going to take the last bit of time here. I, I'm, I'm enjoying uh, chatting with y'all for real. It's, it's dope. I'm going to take the last bit of time here. I want to I wanna, um, kind of geek out a little bit because I was listening to a few episodes and I don't know who said this. Maybe I think it was Jumpman. But um, somebody said at, the, at one point that they grew up and they were a huge fan of wrestling. Yeah? Oh, I think that's... Uh, well, pretty much all of us, right? I think because that was our era. Yeah. Yeah, attitude. So... <laughs> I want to get out. Who 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 was everybody's who was everybody's favorite wrestler? I, 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 whoever wants to start, let me know and let me know why. All right, who want to go first? I already know who my favorite was. Shawn Michaels, man. Yeah. Greatest, uh, to me, the greatest of all time, man. Oh, dang, yeah, he he did. Are you serious, man? Shawn dude. Michaels, the best of all time. He had the showmanship, man. He the was acrobatic. <laughs> <laughs> he just went to the ring and the music come on. You had a. And then everybody, <laughs> uh, yeah, and then he'll come out that song was weak as and then flex and the fireworks go off. I think Shawn Michaels is the best of all time, man. Dog, I get to you his little mood, the little sweet chin sweet music. Sweet chin music, music was, was sick. And and remember, then, no, do you remember when he fought Ric Flair? He retired Ric Flair. That was the most beautiful thing in sports. He retired Ric Flair because he, uh, him and Ric Flair was in a retirement match at WrestleMania. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Sweet chin kicked him, but he said, "I'm sorry." Before he sweet chin kicked him. Hey, the dopest, <laughs> yeah, man, I wanted to cry. The dopest, um, the dopest sweet chin music was that was the one. He, I think it was what's the black dude's name? Shelton Benjamin, right? Oh yeah. So, so you know, um, so he was like on the outside of the ring, kind of on the apron there, and he goes to jump up and like springboard off of the top rope there into the ring. And Sean just catches them right there. That was that was the dopest one I ever seen. Yeah, man, Shawn Michaels, man. That's my. That's my I don't know. If, I don't know if Sean's my favorite, but he he probably he's 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 probably up there. What what about what what, my what about dude, you? My favorite dude was Stone Cold, Honorable Mention, the Hardy Boys. I used to love the fucking Hardy Boys. And then when I found out they was from North Carolina, I was even more of a fan of the Hardy Boys. They were my dogs. Like, I rode with them in every match. But definitely uh, Stone Cold probably had to be my favorite. And then what about you, Juke? Uh, It's going to be... It's hard to pick one, man, because The Rock is one of my favorites. The Undertaker, I love The Undertaker. So I'm going to have to go with The Undertaker. I love The Undertaker. He was, yeah, he was scary as shit. Too. And everybody respected The Undertaker. I don't care who the, who the champion Except was. Except for Kane. Kane whooped that he ass. He's the only right. nigga that... that <laughs> One of my favorite matches, really two of my favorite matches, Hell in a Cell with Mankind. He threw Mankind off the top of the uh, cage. Classic. Yeah. Classic. Then the Buried Alive with him and Mankind, where everybody came and helped uh, Mankind bury the Undertaker. And then at the end of the pay-per-view, oh, I remember that. Undertaker stuck his hand out from under the dirt. I remember that. Boy, hey, they damn. played that shit good as that hell. That shit was crazy. Yeah, hey, that was that was a moment to be alive, yo. Like <laughs> good times, good times. See, this this is a black ass podcast, and 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 and, and I'm so mad at y'all because ain't nobody pick no black wrestler. Uh, you know, don't get it wrong. Like let's be real, we talk about D'Lo Brown like every other week on here. Nah, yeah. hell nah. <laughs> D'Lo, no. So I, okay, this is my honorable mention because. We'll do that. So one of my top is definitely gonna be Booker T, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Booker don't Booker don't get he he's like the he's like the black wrestler. You know what I mean? There's nobody. I don't think there's anybody else that really kind of got up there to the point that he did as a as a you know fully black guy. There's the Rock, but you know the Rock is in. No, hold up, Mark Henry. Mark Henry was up there too. Now, <laughs> no, no. He's probably the most popular black ass wrestler though. Mark Henry. Look at he say nigga on there one time. Bro, Mark Henry won like Olympic <laughs> awards before he even yeah, got. Yeah, I get what he, he did. did. He, but he I did. Think, I think the Booker T argument is more so because. Booker T became popular after we stopped watching wrestling, and he really was the champion for a long yeah, time. Yeah, like, multiple time like, heavyweight like, champion. He got his. He got the flowers <laughs> that The Rock and Henry should have got. Like he was, he was. You turn on TV, you could not not see Booker T on the advertisements everywhere. 
He was every. Hey, the, the best shit. The best shit was uh when him and Stone Cold was in that grocery store. Oh yeah, Y'all remember that? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I go back at sometimes and just think of that clip. I go back on YouTube and watch that shit. It's the funniest fucking shit ever, yo. Watch uh Stone Cold or listen to Stone Cold podcast. He be having all the old wrestlers on there. And they be talking about old matches and stuff like that, and all the behind the scenes that was going on. The one with him and Booker T, real good. Yeah, I, I, um, there's a lot of wrestling podcasts out there too nowadays too. Yeah, it is a lot. All of them. Jim Ross got one. Uh, Bobby Heenan got one. They all got one. I, hey, he, he dead. I mean, not Bobby Heenan. What's the other dude <laughs> that used to? Uh, Jim Cornette. Jim Cornette. Yeah. Jim Cornette. <laughs> hey, listen. Let me tell you something. Jim, Jim Cornette, he he's 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 actually from the same city I was born, right? So he's like a, a you know a hometown kind of thing. That I ain't never met or came across any white boy that can talk shit <laughs> to the degree that he can. If y'all ever get a chance, just find some shit where this dude is talking shit. He he can sell, I swear he can sell any fucking thing. That I I want to get to that point because that dude can fucking go on and just talk his shit. And I ain't never met a white boy that just talked shit like that. What's and you'd be like, damn, this motherfucker, he really mean it, though. <laughs> that shit, that shit's good. That shit's good. Richard Shelton, he from around here, too. Shelton Benjamin from Charlotte. Oh, yeah, he yeah, is. Sure is. Yeah, it's, it's a lot, I think it's a lot of, um, a lot of people that have, have come out of Charlotte, honestly. A lot of really great people. Famous, man. You yeah. catch him at a Hornets game. Oh, and, yeah. Anytime oh, yeah, Ric Flair is is Charlotte. His daughter still stay here. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's the city. Charlotte Flair. Oh, shit. I, well, I ain't never realized that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know what she did. I think her neck or something fucked up. <laughs> well, I, see oh, I ain't never realized, realized that until you said that shit. Well, Sasha Damn. Banks was. I think Sasha her Banks just lost the belt, though. She's still doing chest slaps? Yeah, she just, she wrestled <laughs> just like her dad. Oh, damn. She wore the fur to the and everything. Oh shit. Oh shit. But what I want to wrap up here real quick, just kind of for each of you individually, I want you to just kind of, and this, this will be, um, I guess cathartic for us all, but what, what are some goals you have moving forward as people do start to kind of get back today? Things kind of start to balance out more. I definitely don't want to go back to the office myself. No. Uh, so that's not a goal of mine. <laughs> I'm trying to stay remote as fuck. But um, what are, what are some goals you all have as individuals, and then some goals that you um want to achieve with uh KSP as well? Man, don't speak too fast, guys. Oh, oh, damn. Oh. <laughs> anyway, is <laughs> to rock some more shows. Probably get my uh my uh validation up as a comedian, a real comedian. You know what I mean? Like no real I I call myself a real comedian, but I'm I'm, I'm my biggest critic, so. You know what I mean? Like to me, till I'm out here rocking shows that got like five hundred plus, I ain't did nothing. You're a comedian now. But don't 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 say that because because there's some big motherfuckers out there that still, you know, go and do some smaller clubs and shit. Oh, and yeah. you know, you I, 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 I can sense it. I mean I know it's there. It's oh, just all about putting those stage hours in. Do that shit, man. Oh yeah. Fuck a five hundred. Yeah. If you get if you get two hundred and you get three nights. And there's 200 every night, then you surpass the five. Yeah, that's, that's true. But like, I ain't mean it like that. Like, I'm like I say, I do this thing, but like, I just critique myself hard. So you know what I mean. I just want to, yeah, do it the way that like I see it in my head. I guess I don't know. But you know, once I do that, you know, keep doing things here on KSP, and you know, just keep rocking life out, man. And, Hopefully, man, you know, be married by that time. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. That's pretty that's pretty much it. Make no wrong with that. Yeah. yeah. Who's next? Uh shoot, man. It's jukebox. Um shoot, man. I wanna continue to grow the content. You know, we got the podcast going on, but I wanna grow with that. I wanna get merch out there to our supporters. Um, more YouTube content series, challenges, things like that, man. Just trying to grow the brand more so than the podcast. Just grow the brand as much as I as much as we can. And you know, I want to get to the point where I don't want to. I don't have to be rich off of this, but if I can make what I make now, doing what I like to do, then that would be the end goal for me. You damn skipping. 
because I don't get tired of going and answering to anybody. Um, so I understand. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> real the realest shit I ever heard. <laughs> but no, uh, and then go ahead. Go ahead, John. Uh Can yeah, man. It? Just uh just uh goals personally, man, is this is my personal goal, man. This is it right here. Um just wanna grow this brand, just wanna grow this show and get these subscribers in. My number one priority is taking care of the people who come in here every Friday, every Saturday, Sunday and put in this work. So I mean, at the end of the day, I'm gonna work until I see everybody that that, that pretty much that that you hear on this show or the, that work behind the scenes on this show is is uh what they want to be. So whether that be making sure James is the most successful comedian you ever heard, then that's my priority. Making sure Johnny produced more than just shows here, because I mean Johnny produced our show. Johnny got other shows in production. So like, just making sure everybody reached their potential. And then that and that comes with growing this brand, and that'll help grow everybody else's brand and set everybody else up for success. And as long as everybody's successful, then we, then I've achieved my goal. At the end of the day, that's my number one focus every day. I work, I work for the people at work next to me. That's what I do. Yo, that's real. I really fuck with that. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted y'all to share that because I always try to like tie up things and let people know that black men out here doing shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We all like. We're not monolithic. We all ain't doing the same fucking thing, but it's good that we can come together and be able to um, have these conversations and just shoot the shit and, you know, have a good time and uh, share some knowledge, share some memories, share some stories. I, I really fuck with it. I do want to thank each of you for coming through and taking the time to do this. And what I always try to do, and I want to take a second to talk to the listeners because you know where it's going. You know how I get. You know that you can find us all over the internet. You go onto Google, you type in ubiquitous blacks. Even if you misspell it, Google will be like, well, did you mean? And you just click on that shit, okay? You find us. You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple, all that shit. You find us, follow us, whatever. But the main thing I want you to do, you go onto that iTunes, you leave that review. Listen to me, y'all. If it's not five stars, just keep scrolling. Find some other shit. Don't leave me shit other than five stars. Somebody left me a four stars and it messed up my shit. So I'm upset still about that. <laughs> but if you got if you got five stars to leave and you want to leave a comment, then we'll fuck with it. I'll read it on the show and some shit. But anyhow, you can also send questions in. Send a little notes. Just let me know that you're thinking about me. Let me know that you appreciate what we're doing here. You can email us, ubiquitousblacks at gmail.com. And you can find us all over social media. The same thing, at ubiquitousblacks. Let's see. Is a kettle or? Whether you black as a pot. (laughs) 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 Ah shit. See, I ain't never thought of that. I'm I'm fucking it. I'm I'm taking it. (laughs) All right, here we go. Let me see. See, I've named so many places at this point. I I'll be having to like throw a dart at the mat type shit. All right, so whether you black in Charlotte or black in Paris or black in Ohio. Something like that. All right. And whether you All right. black in right. Ford or you black in Valentine. We are black everywhere. We black there everywhere. You know, that's why. <laughs> that's why <laughs> 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 This is good. I'm probably gonna use this. I'm probably just gonna use this shit. This is fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm ready. Okay. Now, whether you are black in Tulum, Mexico, <laughs> <laughs> having a good time. Definitely black in Tulum, Mexico. Right. Oh, shit. So, whether you are black in Tulum, Mexico, or are you black in Charlotte. We are black everywhere. Boom. Boom. <laughs> really, though, we really are. <laughs>